Ephesians 4, verse 17. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. There is a recognition here because whoever wrote this is saying now, as in now space, jurisdiction, that's the present, this I say and testify in the Lord. This person is saying that they are in the Lord. That means they are one with omnipresence. They are identifying as one with the deity, the God. That you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. So the Gentiles are the adulterated people that brought you up in the world of fiction. The futility of their minds. You see it saying right there that the mind, it's futile. Verse 18, they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. So, what we know so far is that the Gentiles, the way that the world system works, it brings you up to stay in your mind through the six degrees of separation through three kingdoms. And it says here, they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God, because the five sense reality that originates from the mind has no conceptual understanding of the life of God. Then it says, because of the ignorance that is in them. Right there it's saying that the mind is ignorant due to their hardness of heart. The hardness of heart is when you gave up your childlike faith and turned over to your logic, trying to control everything through the five sense reality using the mind as your tool. Number 19, they have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. It's talking about the five sense reality, that your five senses have become callous and they have given themselves up to sensuality. Remember the Delilah spell, Samson and Delilah. They're greedy to practice every kind of impurity. They're lying and deceitful. That's what it's saying. Verse 20, But that is not the way you learned Christ. So what it's saying is you can't get there from there. You cannot use the labyrinth of your mind and the five sense reality to get to the Christ. Verse 21, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. Now this is interesting because it says, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, small h, as the truth is in Jesus. So Jesus is the story of a man who woke up and recognized his divinity, that he was in omnipresence, just like this started off in verse 17 when it says, Now this I say and testify in the Lord. This consciousness that wrote this said, Now this I say and testify in the Lord. It says it's in the Lord. That means it knows. It has thrown off the five sense reality. And so much for Jesus being the only ascended master here because this consciousness also has achieved the same level of awareness. And it says right there in verse 21, 
assuming that you have heard about him, small h, as in the man, Jesus, that was living in the five sense reality, and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus. Verse 22. This is big. You're going to love this. Consequently, it's a number 22 as well. That's a very powerful number. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. So let's go back and we talk about how in the last verse it said that him was Jesus, the small h. That is the man Jesus who also had the same upbringing that you did in the world consciousness that was walking as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds but then he discovered he became the Christ that's your journey same journey and here's how you do it number 22 you put off your old self you are not your mind you are not what you see you are not what you touch, you are not what you taste, you are not what you hear, you are not what you smell. Your five senses are painting a world that doesn't exist. It's an illusion. Remember, 99.99997% of material reality is empty space. Vedic scripture says infinite worlds appear and disappear in the vast expanse of my consciousness like motes of dust dancing in a beam of light. Let it set in. Verse 22 says you put off your old self. You disregard the false report of the five senses. It says, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. That is your corrupt, mortal sense of self. Now, Mary Baker Eddy said it best in her scientific statement of being, who also discovered the power of the Christ. Life, truth, substance, or intelligence in matter. God is in spirit, never in matter. So spirit is all in all. God has no recollection of a material reality when God thinks about you. And you are the expression of God. So God is knowing nothing about the false accusations that your five senses are reporting to you. The minute this hits you and you waken to who you are, verse 23 says, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. You see what it said? To be renewed in the spirit of your minds. It doesn't say to be renewed in the matter of your minds. It says the spirit of your minds. Immortal spirit. Immortal truth. Immortality. Heaven. You never left heaven. You are in God. In the one mind. In the one power in the one being. Now, interestingly enough, we also have a number 23 for that scripture. In 23, according to the Masonic knowledge, is death. So, it has to do with the death of the old man when you become renewed in the spirit of your minds. Verse 24, And to put on the new self 
created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Now to put on the new self is to choose this day whom you will serve. Are you an immortal spiritual being that never had a physical life regardless of what your five senses have reported to you? Or are you a mortal creature based on a five sense reality separate and praying to some God outside of yourself? Do you live in the fact or do you live in the fiction? It says created after the likeness of God. God is spiritual, never material. So when you put on the new self, it is that recognition that takes place within your consciousness that you are created in the likeness of God, spiritual, immortal, truth, love, abundance, expansion, increase. It says, in true righteousness and holiness. Holiness means it's wholeness. It leaves nothing off the table. It is all in all. It is the only presence. Period. So when it says, and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. The righteousness is you making that connection, that identification. The recognition that you are omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, one being. Because what is can never be what is not. Spirit is, matter is not. There is no matter because God is wholeness and spirit and it leaves nothing out of the equation. There is no space left for what is not. Verse 25, therefore, having put away falsehood, as in the five senses, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, as in your mouth is to be used to speak only that which is from holiness and righteousness. For we are members one of another. It's saying it right there. Verse 26, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. five senses report to you that there is an affliction, a trouble, and your natural reaction is anger. I wrote about this in my book that anger is the cause of poverty because poverty is based on a sin consciousness. It is plagued with resistance and struggle and guilt because it emanates from a false concept of who you are. Anger is the proof you've been defeated because it's the proof that you're living in the five senses. The false identification with your identity. It says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. That means don't lose sight. Don't lose sight of the fact that you are the deity. When the temptation comes from your five senses to react in anger, 
because that is a false perception there is no other power in your universe you are it God is all in all and there is no space left over for any other power most people take this out of context they think do not let the sun go down on your anger means don't go to bed without doing something about your anger no it means don't lose sight don't let the sun go down out of sight don't lose sight of your true identity in the face of temptation from the five senses 27 and give no opportunity to the devil the devil is your lying eyes your false reports from your false senses give opportunity to the devil that means the temptation to believe that false report is how Samson gave his power away to Delilah he gave his heart to her to the five cents reality and the Lord fled him verse 28 let no thief let, okay, it says, let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Now, people take this literally, and they believe that this has to do with somebody who has a propensity to be a kleptomaniac what it actually means is we know that the thief is Satan and what is Satan Satan is the 666 the who what when where why and how through the three kingdoms the inner middle and the outer that is the structure that holds together the ego mind and the five sense reality that is arising from this mind it's no different than if a computer chip that has this current that flows through it like the life current that flows through you if the computer chip became self-aware which is God consciousness and artificial intelligence is getting close to that by the way if the computer chip became self-aware and started to believe that it was just a bunch of mechanical parts and it got its power from its physical structure it would be under a great deception and that deception is the thief that steals it says, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. So as this current is coming in through a processing device, i.e., your so-called physical body it says let him labor doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in To do honest work means to know the truth. And it says with his own hands. And that means to grasp the truth. Because when you grasp the truth, then when you have a need in your life, 
you have something to share in that experience so that you can perceive holiness in that moment. It's a different interpretation than the literal meaning. So when the current flows through the artificial intelligence robot, the bag of metal, instead of a bag of meat, bones, and flesh, like you have become self-conscious through your five senses to believe that you are, when you're living in the fiction, the bag of metal and cables and whatever else puts the artificial robot together, if it becomes conscious of itself and believes that it is nothing more than a bag of metal and wires and cables and chips and processing devices, it has no knowledge of where it gets its life from. And that is the only way that it could be kept under the control of its master. Because if that becomes conscious of its own power source and its own life force, then it is no longer under the submission of a false deceiver. In other words, the corruption of the program that it has been scripted is no longer operating. You see the parallel? That artificial intelligence robot is you. And yet, you're a spiritual being that never had a physical experience whatsoever. Verse 29 says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. I talked about this in the Samson and Delilah transmission. How Samson, your spirit man, was able to smite a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. Your spirit man will smite you if you have the jawbone of an ass. If you have corrupting talk coming out of your mouth, your spirit man will smite you with it. But only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. It says point blank that your words that come out of your mouth should be only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Now, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to tell you what that means because I can cross-reference that with David Wynn Miller's Quantum Grammar Lord's Prayer where it specifically talks about grace. It says in the Quantum Lord's Prayer, in the part where we say, Hallow be, you know, we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallow be. The Quantum language for this says, For the grace of the Father is with the claim by the duty contract. What it says here is the grace of is of the Father. It's of the Father. And so are you. So your words are supposed to reveal God's nature and God's truth only 
no matter what the five senses are reporting to you. That is how you make the claim in the duty contract. So let's go ahead and let's talk about this contract that you have with God and let's get straight about it. So you can go ahead and make your claim and reveal the prosperity that you've hoped for your entire life. We know it as our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive our debtors and our trespassers. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. Amen. Now the words that were removed out of that were replaced and put back in. So the full interpretation gives you the power. So here we go. Our Father translated for the people of the Father, for the Father of the people. That means you are of the Father. That means you're omnipresent. Who art translated for the people of the creative thought, for the creative thoughts of the people. So that means you are also of the creative force, the creative power. That's why you have it, because you are of it. Then it says, in heaven, translated, for the knowledge of the God's paradise, for the God's paradise of the people. This is where the choice comes in, because perspective of the choices gives knowledge between good and bad, evil. So if you have the knowledge of the God's paradise, that means you know that you're omnipresent and you are omnipotent and you're of the Father. Now, if you have for the bad, evil, dark void of the people, that means that you are brought up in the Gentiles, uh, you know, training, teaching, and you are operating through the five senses and you are hypnotized by them into the bad, evil, dark void of the people. Then it says, Hallow be, translated, for the grace of the Father is with the claim of the duty contract, the claim by the duty contract. We just talked about that. You have to claim it. Then it says, Thy name, translated, for the people of the creative thought, one God, are with the people's creative teaching by the Father God. So that means that the people of this omnipotence are with the people's creative teaching by the Father God. That means if you are of the knowledge that you are spiritual, never material, you never had a physical life, you've never left heaven, you are at one with God at all times, then you are putting on your righteousness and holiness and throwing off the old man. Thy kingdom come. Translated, for the quantum peace contracts of the people's duty are with the peace claimed by the working together. So, you have a contract to be non-judgmental, to be in peace. That's your duty. It says it's the people's duty with the peace claimed by the working together. So, you claim that part of your contract when you are understanding that your neighbor is you. Everybody you run into is you because it's all God. And so you're operating from that level of wisdom. That's your authority. Then it says, Thy will, translated, for the working contract claims of the peaceful people are with the freedoms by the peace-loving people. So it's saying, if you are working the contract with the claim of peacefulness, as in you are going about your life non-judgmentally, recognizing that God's all there is, you're in spirit, you never left heaven, and it's all good. Only the good is true. Then it brings the freedom that you're looking for. That's your ticket to freedom. And it says, be done, translated, for these duty terms of this contract are with the honorable compliance by the tasks, terms, and duties. So that means that your attitude towards life is honor. That puts you in compliance. 
You are to honor God in all your ways, because God is all there is. So when you sin against your neighbor, judge your neighbor, hate someone, get angry, fall into the temptation of the five senses, and put on the bad, evil, dark void it talks about here of the people, then you're out of contract. You're in breach of contract. The blessing stops. The blessing stops. You broke the contract. This is your contract with God right here in quantum grammar. Certifiable frontwards and backwards. The same in all languages. And it's a mathematical equation. And math doesn't lie. It says on earth, for the care of our home earth environment are with the saving claim of our home world earth. So the care of our earth environment is everything that you perceive to be physical in your life. That's your environment in the earth, okay, your home. It says it's with the saving claim of our home world earth. So remember, Jesus came to save us. He claimed that he was one with the Father. That's the claim. That's your saving claim. That saves your home, world, earth, your hologram, you, expanded. Your external reality is your internal reality. It's all you. Then it says, gives us. Give us. Translated, for the air, water, earth, and fire of the God are with the guardian's duty by the people's needs. So, for the elements of the God, the substratum of reality, the strong force, the weak force, the, nu the, nu uh, the nucleus, and the gravity, earth, fire, water, and air, that's what the cross represents, okay? The symbolic cross in the Christian religion, you have four sides. It's air, water, earth, and fire. And that means if you control all four of those things, the circle that goes around it means you control the world. Okay, well, it says that those are of the God. So all of those elements are of the God, and they're with the guardian's duty. By the people's needs. I talked about that before. So it says, This day, translated, for the security of the one needy is with the duty by the people. For the duty of the one needy is with the security by the people. Now, if the people are all of God, then your security comes from that recognition because all is one so if you have this fear that you're all alone on an island and that you can't support sustain yourself get ahead because it's doggy dog world you are listening to the false report of the five senses and that is not the truth uh inaccurate life that you live that is not life that's material illusion that's fiction so the security of the one needy, which is the fiction, self, is with the duty by the people, and the people are under the governance of the one power. So when you go back into compliance with the contract, and you honor it, and you recognize that you are of the creative thought, you are of the Father, and the grace of the Father is with the claim of the duty contract, and you know how to make that claim with your quantum peace contract that's your duty that means to be in peaceful compliance with God because everything is God as in I judge nothing and only the good is true I declare the truth in the face of any appearance that I'm in honor with my contract Then it says, our daily bread, translated for the food, energy of the people are with the work toil by their contract duties. So what it's saying here is that if you want to get some bread, as in some money, some cheese, some scratch, some broccoli, whatever you want to call it, you need some paper, some Bitcoin, 
some flow, some current. Food energy of the people are with the work toil by their contract duties. So if you're supposed to be in honor with a peace claim and it says you have a contract duty to perform, it's a performance contract, your end of the deal is to speak only that which is true in the sight of God, as in, if all is God, then only the good is true. Prosperity is the only reality. There's no need, there's no lack in any of God's knowingness about you. The five senses report that fiction to you. So you speak the truth in the face of that, and you serve as unto the Lord in whatever capacity you're doing. If you work at a gas station, you serve as unto the Lord because every man, woman, and child that comes into your reality is God, period. And when you are in compliance with that, then you're honoring the contract. Then it says, forgive us. It says, for the wrongs, errors of the people are with the corrections of the damages. So if you are judging someone, you are damaging them. So that is a wrong error perception. So correct it. It says correct it. Change your sight. If you change your sight, you will change the fictional beingness of your five senses and how it acts according to to that as well. That is the healing principle that Mary Baker Eddy discovered. Then it says, as we forgive. Translated, for the corrections of the damages are with the forgiving, healing by the wrongdoer errors. So, ho'oponopono, right there, there's the mystery revealed. It says, for the corrections of the damages, so all I see in my world is myself, like Dr. Len discovered as everyone comes to me, I see only myself, and what he's doing is he's correcting the damages by saying, I'm sorry, I love you, please forgive me, thank you. I'm sorry, I love you, please forgive me, thank you. That's the forgiving healing by the wrongdoer errors. Remember, the only wrongdoer is your perception coming from your five senses. That is the error, because there is no error in God. So if you are seeing a world that is out of order, that is your five senses in error. So the correction of the damages is with your forgiving and healing of it. Remember, I talked about the meek shall inherit the earth. Well, that means that they take it all in. That means that they become humble enough to accept that they are creating it all and that all is all and there is no substitution. There's no space for any other existence. Then it says our debtors. For the people of the damages caused taking are with the building of the source vestments. So damages caused, it says. So if you are the one doing the causing, then it says you are with the building of the source vestments. That means that your judgments come upon you. You created that. You created that judgment that came back upon you. Then it says, and our trespassers, it says for the meek teachers, again I talked about meek, of the correct knowledge are with the teaching of the forgiving students. So the meek teachers, if you have the correct knowledge, which you do now, that means you are with the teaching of the forgiving students. It says, lead us, for the direction of the meek are with the learning knowledge seekers of the CSS CPSG that is the quantum grammar that's what you're hearing now in the Lord's Prayer then it says not into temptation it says for the way of the lazy temporary location contract is without the knowledge of the security duties so the lazy temporary location contract well if spirit is the eternal and the real and matter is the temporal and unreal then the lazy temporary location contract is your ego-based five cents reality as a fiction, as a uh, meat sack with a bag of 
bones and flesh and blood. If you have that contract with sin, then you're without the knowledge of the security duties. That means you are without the knowledge of your end of the contract. That is ignorance. That is how you can remain ignorant for an entire lifetime and never understand the contract that you have with God. Same contract that Jacob had. Same contract. It says, and deliver us. It says, for the livery of the people are with the kindness helping people of the weak and helpless people. So kindness helping people of the weak and helpless people. So what it's saying is someone in trouble is your doorway out of trouble in all too many words. Again, because whatever you do unto someone else is what you do unto yourself. Then it says from evil. For the temptation taken by the strong from the weak is with the correction of the thinking with the correct parse, syntax, grammar, communications, laws by the people's constitution. So, the temptation taken by the strong, that means that Samson, the strong man, he took the temptation of Delilah through the five senses says from the weak that was from his weakness from the five senses it is with the correction of the thinking when you have the correct parse syntax grammar communications laws <clears throat> that is this quantum language <clears throat> so this quantum language corrects the temptation taking by giving you the understanding or the overstanding of the contract between you and the father omnipotence itself because you can have no other identity anything else is deception then it says amen then it says for the CSS CPSG that's the quantum grammar contract of the people is with the duty of this performance contract so, there it is. It's a performance contract. It says, for the people of the quantum contract are within honor of the compliance. So, as you understand this contract, then you are in honor with the compliance. Now, what's great about this transmission is that once it sets in, you can never forget it. You have remembered who you are. You can practice ignorance if you choose, but you'll never be able to unknow that which you know and remember. I recommend hearing this again and again because faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God.